In this video, I'm going to look at Curnow and Stackelberg under the case where firms have zero marginal cost. We'll start with the Curnow model. Here we have a two-firm Curnow. The inverse demand in the market, inverse market demand is given by the following, where the output, uppercase Q, is the output of firm 1 plus the output of firm 2. Substituting in Q subscript 1 plus Q subscript 2 and for uppercase Q, we can rewrite our inverse market demand as follows. So firm 1's output and firm 2's output again are just given by these subscripts. And as I mentioned in the title, the marginal cost is zero for each firm, so MC equals zero. So we're going to start from firm 1. For firm 1, Firm 1's revenue is price, the market price, times the output of Firm 1. The price, I'm going to substitute in here for P, this expression. So everything in brackets is just the inverse market demand, and that is all multiplied by Firm 1's output. Simplifying a little bit here in brackets, this minus 2 times the output of Firm 1, this minus 2 times the output of Firm 2, we get this result here. Simplifying one other step here, the 24 then multiplied by firm 1's output minus 2 q subscript 1 times q subscript 1 gives us this result and so on. And now the important part, we're going to get marginal revenue. We are going to take the partial derivative of firm 1's revenue function with respect to its output and you'll get this result right here, 24 bring down the 2 in front, so we get minus 4 q subscript 1. And then lastly, this minus 2 q subscript 1 times q subscript 2, the partial derivative of that with respect to firm 1's output is just minus 2 q subscript 2. In general, profit maximization is to set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. In this video, we're going to assume marginal cost is zero. So what we're doing is basically just setting our marginal revenue equation equal to zero. That's it. So setting marginal revenue equal to zero. I'm going to solve this for firm one's output. So moving some things around here. And now dividing through by 4. 24 divided. 24 divided by 4 is 6, 2 divided by 4 is 1 half, and we're going to call this firm 1's reaction function. Give me firm 2's output, I'll give you firm 1's best response with this function. When both firms have identical marginal costs, and then do in this example, marginal cost is zero for both firms, the reaction functions are a mirror image of one another. So firm 2's reaction function it's going to basically be the mirror image of firm 1's. Just going to reverse these subscripts. I'll show you how to drive this nevertheless. So let's solve for two, firm 2's reaction function. So firm 2's reaction function, uh, we're going to get that by starting with the fact that revenue for firm 2 is the price times firm 2's output. Once again, replacing this P with 24 minus the rest of this, plugging that in brackets, and then simplifying what's in brackets, and then multiplying this Q subscript 2 throughout what appears in brackets, and then time for marginal revenue. Marginal revenue for firm 2 is the partial derivative of the revenue function with respect to firm 2's output and we get this equation. Setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, and once again, marginal cost is zero, so all we're doing is setting marginal revenue equal to zero. And we're gonna solve this for firm two's output, Q subscript two. Moving some things around, and then dividing through by four. As I illustrated before, this is firm two's reaction function, just a mirror image of firm one's. All right, so to recap so far, we've got firm 1's reaction function and firm 2's reaction function. So algebraically, we have two equations and two unknowns. 
And the way I'm going to solve this, I'm going to take Firm 1's reaction function, and where I have Q subscript 2, I'm going to plug in what Q subscript 2 equals, 6 minus 1 half Firm 1's output. So plugging that in here, plugging Firm 2's reaction function into Firm 1's reaction function, we get this. And now we're going to simplify. Minus 1 half times 6 is minus 3. Minus 1 half times minus 1 half Q subscript 1 is going to be a positive here, 0 0.25 Q subscript 1. So minus times minus, we get the positive sign. We are going to collect the Q subscript 1 terms. So subtracting 0 0.25 Q subscript 1 from both sides, we got 1 Q subscript 1 minus 0 0.25 Q subscript 1. That will lead us to 0.75 Q subscript 1 on the left-hand side of the equation. And then finally, dividing through by 0 0.75, Q1's profit maxim firm 1's profit maximizing output is 4 units. Q subscript 1 equals 4. To get firm 2's output, just take this 4 and plug it into firm 2's reaction function and firm 2 will likewise produce 4 units of output. To get the market price, recall our inverse demand and for Q subscript 1, Q subscript 2, just plug in our answers here and simplify it 24 minus 16 the market, oops sorry the market price is $8. So each firm will sell four units of output at a price of $8. Okay, let's move on to the Stackelberg. So let's move on to the Stackelberg model. Firm one is the leader, firm two the follower. Same market inverse demand. We know from the Carnot solution that firm 2's reaction function is given by this following equation. So we're going to come back to that in a second. So starting with firm 1's revenue, price times firm 1's output, substituting the price equation in here for P. Simplifying as we did before what's in brackets. And now we're going to do a substitution. So where I have this Q subscript 2, I'm going to plug in firm 2's reaction function. When firm 1 sets its profit maximizing output, it's going to consider how firm 2 is going to respond to its output. So to take that into account, we're going to sub substitute firm 2's reaction function into firm 1's revenue function, as we see right here that I have it marked in bold. And let's just further simplify what's uh, in brackets. So minus 2 times 6, minus 12, minus 2 times minus 0 0.5. We get a plus 1 here, or Q subscript 1. So 24 minus 12 is now just 12. And this minus 2Q subscript 1 plus Q subscript 1 is just minus Q subscript 1. And now multiplying this Q subscript 1 through what's in brackets. This is firm 1's revenue function. We will get its marginal revenue by taking the derivative of the revenue function with respect to firm 1's output. And we get this result. Setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Once again, marginal cost is zero. So 12 minus 2 Q subscript 1 equals zero. Solving for Q subscript 1, firm 1 will produce six units of output. How much will firm 2 produce? Plug this six into firm 2's reaction function, and we see that firm 2 will produce three units of output. So a standard feature of Stackelberg is that if both firms have the same cost structure, the leader firm, the Stackelberg leader, will produce twice as much output as the follower. And let's finally get the price. And so now let's get the price, uh, plugging the output of firm one and the output of firm two into the market inverse demand. 
we get a market price here of $6. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.